What's up, rogues? Let's hop right into it. One of the best builds for Season 5. I'm talking billions of DPS. It is crazy how much damage this thing can actually do. Duriel doesn't even have enough health to really take the amount of damage. But basically, you are going to be able to absolutely delete content with this build. So let's go ahead and show off some Infernal Hordes over here. And uh, the main thing that you want to do with this build is specifically build into a Poison Barrage setup. This is one of the top tier builds. It will require Ubers to get it fully up and running at a very high level. But at the very basic level, if you still need a leveling build, check the pin. There will be something as this is mainly oriented around players that have actually reached max level, which it doesn't take that long to reach in season five especially with the new buff drop rates of the mythics or the uber uniques it's going to be a lot easier to achieve this build so for starters we are going to go over how we are doing so much damage because it's a frequently asked question so you can see this screenshot in fact we can actually roll to like where i was testing here keep in mind i'm not even min max look at that damage in the very middle here we're looking at 1.1 1 billion damage and that is ticking every half a second so you would basically multiply that and the way that it works is because we're attacking so fast we have these barrage arrows that split up with close quarters and plus bonus damage per dark shroud is how we're getting these crazy numbers in fact this is actually from the same clip i was kind of just testing out in like the dummy area this is how we were getting some of those numbers uh this is actually uh, from the screenshot i was kind of testing out how we can actually ramp up the damage keep in mind that uh you can actually swap in other things whether you want to run doombringer or get more attack speed with let's say accelerating aspect that's all up to you but this is how we're essentially getting those crazy crazy damage numbers is by specifically affecting enemies by crowd control so for starters let's go ahead and go over some of the newer things so first off you can break the attack speed cap in this game it's supposed to only let you go to 100 but there are special attack speed bonuses that can let you go way past that now if you happen to be running accelerating if you want to run it instead of maybe doombringer for more defenses you can run accelerating and make your attack speed bonus go up to 180. Now, you could probably increase this even further if you get a god roll on an amulet. And keep in mind, I'm not even fully optimized yet, which is what I find crazy with this build. So, let's go and go over kind of the newer changes for Season 5 and Barrage and why it's so good. It really comes down to the aspect of creeping death. This is going to give us way more damage because uh, we get to deal increased damage over time to enemies for each crowd control effect that they're affected by. Now, as far as that goes, that has like no limit um and then on top of it unstoppable and staggered bosses take 40 uh x increased damage over time from you instead now this is on our two enter so that gets multiplied times two so that's why the damage just goes absolutely to the moon is because of this aspect but if you are doing bosses you can run accelerating and just drop uh creeping death because it's not going to be affected by the um crowd control because you will actually kill the boss even the tormented level 200 bosses you will kill that before they even get to get staggered once which is crazy but uh, Creeper Death is more so suited against specifically doing Infernal Hordes or if you're interested in doing the pit. This is still a pretty good one as building up stagger is still valuable. But again, if you're just doing some of the bosses, you'll kill the boss before this even gets to activate. So it's crazy, crazy good. So that's one of the newer things. And then on top of that, the Umber Crux is in like basically every build. It's one of the best things that Rogue has. And then we are also running Doombringer for crazy amounts of survivability. If you want more damage, feel free to drop Doombringer, run Accelerating, Intercom. All those are great options. Uh, and then on top of that, Fist of Fate is so powerful. But the main source of our damage is actually going to be coming from the Poison, which is going to be from Andaro's Massage. And you get some from Poison Abu, but the main damage is actually here. Poison and Butte just facilitates activating specifically the bonus on the Paragon uh, board. But let's go ahead and go over the skills and kind of how the build plays. So for starters, we're running Smoke Grenade, gives us more damage. And then we're also running Barrage. You can actually change up a couple things on the skill tree, we'll get into that in a second here. Uh, but Barrage is our main source of damage, so we basically spam this uh, and... Even though it doesn't deal damage itself, it procs the damage, and even though it has a really low lucky hit chance, we are hitting so many times because of the totem that lets us basically ricochet and split these arrows into just crazy amounts of DPS. And then we also have Poison Trap. This will give us more damage. It will also knock down the enemy, so that's another, like, crowd control. But it's really as another subterfuge skill to activate to get the totem that Umbacrux spawns in. By the way, just as a little bonus tip, you won't be able to just set up with Poison Trap before the fight because what happens is the Poison Trap will proc instantly because Umbacrux generates the little totem, which registers as an enemy, then it pops it. So you can't set up with a bunch of Poison Traps uh, before any, like, boss fight. But it doesn't really matter. All the bosses in this game will just get 
deleted with like a couple seconds anyways. Poison me, you activate this to get more damage, and it's just really to activate the thing. Now, if you want to, you can actually put a couple extra points into it, and you can technically deal a little bit more damage, but I find it to be unnecessary. Um, you're better off with more survivability here. Then we run Shadow Step. It's to activate our Close Quarters, because Close Quarters is one of the god-tier things in the game for so long with Rogue. And then we're also running Dash to activate a Mobility Skull. Uh, to actually give us more mobility and proc our close quarters. Uh, but pretty much all you need is shadow step. If I was to say that there's an optional skill here, I would say dash is optional, but I really like it for the infernal hordes because when there's a new event, I can just dash and I go right into the little like thing where I have to sit in the circle, right? And then running inner sight. So it gives us extra crit so we can activate our uh, umbers aspect. But what's really good with it is it just gives us unlimited energy for a duration. And if you do want to go ahead and run like uh, edge masters, that's fine too. Uh, so as far as the gear and aspects, so we want Andarials. If you're wanting to run this build and you don't have Andarials yet, I recommend just playing a Heart Seeker leveling build. I'll have one pinned down below, but you really need Andarials to make this build up and running for the Poison Rogue. If you want to, you can put more points into Poison Imbue, and then also you can run uh, more points into Barrage, and then kind of try to play it until then, but I really recommend getting this before really trying to make this build. And then uh, we're running Tyrael's Might. If you don't happen to have it, Ranks to Dark Shroud is what you're looking for on a chess piece, but Tyrael's Might is basically the best god tier item in the game for the chess piece for almost all builds. And then Fist of Fate, because it's going to give us crazy lucky hit. And Darius is all based off of that lucky hit chance to activate that Poison Nova. And it got a really good buff um, in a update back in Season 4, which allows the Poison Nova to spawn in on where you hit it versus where your character's location is. So it's basically used for that. Um, if you try to get one of these, I have a really bad roll. In fact, I have minus 100 uh, lucky hit chance because if you get a greater affix one, you get like 140 plus in terms of the uh, lucky hit chance on it. That's the main thing. But you also want lucky hit chance to apply a random crowd control effect for two seconds. That's what you want to go ahead and get uh, greater affix. Attack speed, you're going to cap out on. Crit strike chance doesn't help with our build other than Umbrus, so you don't really need it. You just want this specifically for lucky hit chance. And then your attack randomly deal damage. Obviously, don't get a really bad rolled one, but uh, that's another stat. So basically, three of the stats need to roll good on this item to get the most value. The other two don't matter. Even though attack speed isn't really a bad stat, you're just going to overcap on it. I have way over 100% in my gameplay. And then uh, Umbrus over here is really decent because it gives us extra survivability. And then another really good thing, if you can craft it on your pants, is the bonus to second win. Second win is one of the most god tier things in the game. And then on your pants, you definitely want to craft a chance to freeze. That is one of the best things because of uh, Frigid Finesse uh, that that you can get on the rogue and you, you can get also another crowd control effect but honestly i think just getting double freeze is totally fine too but you at least want freeze in one area because freeze is one of the more important ones uh, as far as the uh, utility goes uh, and then uh another thing that is really good and if you want to get movement speed that's totally fine i'm just at the point where i have a really good Tyrael's Might with movement speed on it, but you can also get movement speed in your boots. Keep in mind, movement speed is capped at a bonus of 100%, so you can only go to 200% movement speed, uh, but if you need movement speed, that's fine. One thing that is important on the boots uh, or on the pants is to get one thing to have armor because you don't have Harlequin, so you need to get armor, or you can actually craft the tempering to bonus armor on uh, one of your pants uh, rolls. And then, um, what you do want to try to get, and this is specifically on the boots, is energy per second. If you don't have this, you may run into resource problems. Even though Umbercrux gives you points into uh, Innervation, which does give you a lucky hit chance to get, like, Restoration. If you want to put points into that, that's fine. I have zero points into it other than the Umbercrux, as well as the one point required to go ahead and get the uh, second win. And then Creeping Death, which we already talked about. What you're really looking forward to getting on this is Barrage Projectiles to cast twice, as well as the damage per dark shroud to be on the item and then for our amulet we're running aspect of branching volleys so what this does is we're really looking at the second line that the bonus damage barrage doesn't matter the uh barrage arrows have a chance to split into two arrows whenever they ricochet this is upgraded to 90 percent when you craft it on the amulet which makes it so the thing will actually branch out and then they can hit two additional targets that's why we have incredible 
godly clear speed and this is why this is an absolute s tier build is specifically because the arrow is split letting you have extra lucky hit and since you always have that totem there's always guaranteed uh something to actually have this arrow split then like every single build in the game ring of the star of the skies then high velocity this allows barrage to actually pierce through so you're getting more lucky hit and then also you get more attack speed which is great and this is actually in the second attack speed cap which is really good and then one thing that you do need to get specifically on your ring is lucky hit uh chance to make enemies vulnerable because you need some sort of source of vulnerability whether you want to run a cursed touch on the build which you can actually throw in if you're really desperate for it but just try to get this that's the main thing that you want and then also lucky hit chance now the other spot is kind of free you can get pretty much any offensive stat here but those are the two stats that you do definitely want you can get smoke grenade size you can also get at damage per dark shroud you can even on all the pieces of gear instead of damage per dark shroud to get damage to crowd control because that's going to give you another multiplier uh, honestly at the end of the day it depends on your roles for certain things but either one is good and i'll explain why once we get into the tree uh, and then we're running umber crux just like every rogue build but if you want more damage you can get another crafted uh chance for barrage projectiles to cast twice and then you can run intercom you can run um accelerating aspect anything offensive is going to be uh, good for this build you can even run edge masters up to you whatever you want to run i personally recommend doombringer because it makes it so uh once you see the boss fight at the very end here i can face tank the entire boss fight which is great uh, obviously against lilith blood waves or high levels of the pit try not to just sit in those but uh it's pretty much a build where it's relatively immune to most things i even take in this run the most dangerous thing which is the negative resistance uh like uh, uh modifier here and then uh for our uh gems amethyst because we're doing damage over time and then we want rubies as well as skulls and or diamonds depending on what you need to get maybe your materials isn't good but for the most part you should be res capped with this but get some uh skulls in and you should be armor capped with this build quite easily as far as the skill tree goes, and check out the notes, I have some notes under the thing in case any of you guys want to read them uh, for other suggestions here, but as far as the uh, skill tree goes, let's go ahead and go over this, we'll make this a little bit bigger, because, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm here supporting the uh, mobile watchers, so uh, over here, uh, Heartseeker it is what I put in, but it doesn't matter. Uh, and then we also running Barrage. We don't need to take this one over here because uh, you could throw the third cast makes enemies vulnerable if you really need that vulnerability, but I'd rather take the extra skill point for more survivability. But if you don't happen to have a source of vulnerability, take this. It's really important. And then if you really need the crit, I guess you could go this, but it's fine. I don't think you really need crit with this build other than for activating Umbras. And then we are running at Sturdy for damage reduction, just one point of siphoning strikes. But if you want to put more into this, that's fine. For... Uh, Shadow stuff, I really like getting the extra cooldown, plus it does actually uh, stun them, so it's another crowd control, some more damage, I like it for that. And then we're running Weapon Master, just like every single Rogue build. And then the only important thing to get is Trick Attack, so when we do those crowd control effects, we're getting more uh, Crit Strike Chance and Crit Strike uh, Damage. Now, even though this build doesn't really rely off of this, there's just kind of extra points. If you want to drop this completely, put more points into Unstable Elixirs to actually have this ability to stun the enemies, that's fine. You could drop all these four points and then get more survivability. It's up to you on what you actually want to go for here. Then we're going to be maxing out uh, Dark Shroud here, just like every single build. Then we get Smoke Grenade. We definitely want this one so we can get more of the totems, and it's just another like extra bonus on damage here and then for a poison imbuement i just like putting one point into it however if you want to drop points out of this uh, that is another option uh where you get uh poison imbued skills have a chance to reduce poison imbuement's cooldown that's fine too uh basically you have this up half of the time depending on your cooldown reduction this could be up even more but uh, poison imbuement is a pretty decent thing to run because it just gives us a bonus not for the poison imbuement for barrage to deal the bonus uh, it's mainly for the bonuses that you get on the paragon just so you activate it then we're running frigid finesse as well as uh, getting all the points into the poison one so extra poison damage extra damage reduction uh, really good stuff indeed. Alchemic Advantage is one of the best things to actually get if you can get it on your amulet. You can get Exploit, Frigid Finesse, those are all great. Um, lucky Hit Chance, uh, all those things are going to be uh, ideal uh, to actually get. And then uh, as far as the other part here, so Innervation over here, if you want to put more points in it, that's totally fine if you're having resource problems. But second win is definitely what you want to go for. And then I'm already capped at movement speed. Again, my materials might just happen to have a lot of movement speed on it. So haste over here doesn't really do too much for me. But it's not a bad thing to get. You can max this one out. Uh, Adrenaline Rush, you're going to need to put one point into it. And then we are running close quarters. And the reason why is because we have all this bonus to activate crowd control. We might as well get some sort of bonuses on it with the Paragon board for the 
bonus damage or crowd control. It just gives us another source of multiplier in terms of damage. So this is the only one that's really good here because we can't run this because we're not melee. Precision doesn't uh, really do too much for us because it's based off of crit. Victimize over here. Victimize is pretty busted in Season 5. And then we have Exposure for the Trap, which uh, I guess you get the Stun Grenades. It doesn't really matter too much. Um, I actually saw another really cool build, but uh, shout out to another uh, Diablo partner, uh, Mippy. He actually has a pretty cool build with Exposure and then like you do this thing with Ultimate. But uh, it does require you to actually build into it. It's a completely different build, but uh, it's another way to kind of play this build in a similar way. Uh, so it's an, another option. And then as far as the Paragon board, this is what we are running. So uh, we are running Fluidity over here. And then we are also running Exploit Weakness with Tracker. So more damage over here. And then we are running Cunning Stratagem with Bane. So more poison damage. And then uh, Cheap Shot with Devious over here. It's going to give you more damage for the crowd controls. And then we have Lirana's Instinct. So more bonus damage to crowd controls equals more X multiplier in damage for our build. And then we are also running Eldritch uh, Bounty with Canny over here. So that's going to be uh, a bonus. And the reason why we want Poison Abuse is just because of this. So for 9 seconds over here, you get pretty much this thing up most of the time. It's only on a 12 second cooldown. And this is up for 9, so just activate when you see like Elites. And then, that's counting no CDR, but you don't really need CDR in this build. And then we have Deadly Ambush, because we are, are going to affect the enemies by traps via Poison Trap. And uh, the Umber Crux also, technically, uh, if I can mouse over it, it will count as a trap uh, damage uh, over here. So, uh, that is going to be our build for one of the top tier rogue builds in Season 5. I think this is, if you guys were wondering, what do I think is the best rogue build? Right now, I feel like this is the top tier one. This and Flurry are the ones that I would recommend, but if you guys do want to play other rogue builds, I have pretty much every single like rogue build uploaded already. Some of these are from the PTR. I'm going to drop all of them, but so far, to answer your question, this one is my current favorite. It has one of the fastest clear speeds. It's incredibly tanky because Doombringer just allows you to just get crazy amounts of HP. Plus it has all stats, which is great. Uh, but I really like the addition of Doombringer. But um, if you're wondering, do I need Doombringer to play this? Absolutely not, but you will be a little bit squishier. Uh, but what, what I mean by squishier is you could still do all of the content. Like it's no problem. Like you could just, you're gonna still be able to dominate most of the content. It's just that you can sit in AoE and I like to play this game very lazily so I'm able to go ahead and get more value by holding still obviously you get more dps because you don't have to run out of the certain things now there are certain things that you don't want to face tank like if it's going to do any sort of like freeze or like uh, it's going to make your character lose control then move out of it but other than that uh, i'm just going to use dash to move out of it i'm just going to hold down the button <laughs> it just really again lets you play very very lazily you can see i'm doing more of like that little testing here and keep in mind my fist of fate is really bad it's a one third of the actual like max value so once i get a better fist of fate i'll maybe we'll make an update to this build then we can hit for even more i mean again we were already hitting for uh, a billion plus uh, and remember this is every half a second but you can see over here i was just testing out swapping out doombringer for uh inner uh calm as one of them and you can see the damage just goes crazy this is actually from the same uh clip uh, uh, if i can pause oh dang it i think i paused it too slow wait was that 1.4 i think there's 1.4 billion but remember this number like you can see that that's a uh, 1.25 billion right there i believe or is that uh okay well anyways uh this again was taken uh, from this, but uh, how this works is every half a second is where this actually ticks. But that's obviously counting the poison trap. That's also activating poison view. That's like everything in like mid math close quarters. And uh, this will definitely take into consideration like a, a high like you know hit. Sometimes it's not always gonna hit for a billion because it takes time to ramp up. But anyways, that's going to go ahead and wrap up the build. Let me know, guys, what you think of this build if you've played it and if you were wondering, again, what you should build into. I'd recommend starting out with Heartseeker and then transitioning into this as this is mostly endgame. Again, check the pin. But the build will be also linked in the pin or link in bio if you're watching this on TikTok. But anyways... If you guys want to see an update to this build, if there needs to be a build update, I'm not sure if we're going to need one, but if there is a build update, I'll update you guys to the sub and turn that bell on, and you'll be notified once we drop it. Anyways, take care, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.